human faces out in the audience. <laughs> Yay! A um, couple of announcements. First of all, in two weeks we will be having a congregational meeting. We will try to keep it as brief as possible. Most of you have been emailed all of your information about the congregational meeting. Uh, the annual report needs approved, and you should have those. The budget needs approved. You should have that as well. If you do not have email, there are paper copies in the Narthex. So as you, as you leave today, grab a paper copy. Um, we also need council members. That's one thing that was left off the original message. We definitely need council members. We have a number of positions open, and it would be just peachy if somebody would step up and volunteer. I've asked a number of people, but I've heard mostly no's. So anyway, we need council members as well. Uh, we also have the concern of the month for the pet pantry, uh, collecting dog, cat food, ferret food, rabbit food, any type of pet food you can think of. And there is a box downstairs. Now the church will not be church office will not be open this week, so my suggestion is if you can bring it on Sundays, that would be awesome. Um, if you desperately need to come by during the week, please call me. Uh, my number's in the directory, and I will oh, uh, get together a time with you. Judy Flating said the tree out front has been pruned, and they did a wonderful job. Thank you, Judy for organizing that. And I also want to say a huge thanks to Pat Hoffman, who is substituting in for Ed today, who is under the weather. So thank you, Pat. And with that, let us begin worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the beginning was the Word. In the Word was life. The Word became flesh and lived among us. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament, according to Samuel, the third chapter. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. 
And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The New Testament reading in 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never! Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body. But the, fornic but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The Gospel reading from John, chapter 1. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph of Naz from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you ever had a preconceived idea that kept you from doing something? Maybe a friend had been asking you for years to go to the symphony, but after hearing one bad classical music piece, you decided that all classical music was purely rotten. Getting tired of having your friend bug you, you decided to go with your friend to the symphony and actually had a wonderful time. Your notion of all classical music being crummy was shattered. You just had to come and see. Now something similar takes place in today's gospel lesson. In our gospel today, Jesus is beginning his ministry and calling his disciples. He calls Philip, who in turn goes to his friend Nathanael and tells him he has found the man Moses and the prophet spoke of, Jesus, son of Joseph of Nazareth. Ah, but Nathaniel has some preconceived notions. He sees Nazareth as a small, little, good-for-nothing, podunk town, and his response is, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? You can just see him sneer the question. Philip's response is simply, Come and see. 
So Nathaniel goes, perhaps even reluctantly. But it takes very little time and just a very short discourse between Jesus and Nathaniel. And Nathaniel emphatically responds that Jesus is, in fact, the Son of God. Just like that, Nathaniel's preconceived notion about Nazareth is gone. All he had to do was come and see. Now we too are called to come and see to follow Christ, and we all know what it's like to follow Christ here at Good Shepherd. It's a warm, wonderful family of God. In fact, I had quite a conversation about Good Shepherd on Tuesday afternoon. With Anne being in the Canton Advanced Youth Symphony and Carl in the regular Canton Youth Symphony, the nice people there expect regular tuition payments. So I stopped over to pay them on Tuesday. Rachel, who is the education director, met me at the door, followed closely in tow by Matthew Yerushevitz, who is the conductor of the U Symphony and the assistant conductor of the Canton Symphony. He told me he came down because he just wanted to say hi. He hadn't seen people for so long. And I told him, yeah, I was poised to click on the season ticket button, but then it all went south. He said, yes, I'm the eternal optimist, so we'll be together again soon, maybe, maybe fall. I said, strangely enough, that's what I keep telling our church. Fall, in fall, we'll get back to normal. And he said, well, you're in person. At least you're in person because we've had nothing at our church inside since March. He said, oh yeah, we were outside in the parking lot for a while, but that ended. And I said, well, we were in the parking lot too, and it was hotter than blue blazes. So we came inside. And then the conversation went crazy. I started talking about Good Shepherd, he started talking about his church, and we went back and forth, and it was getting loud. And it surprised me that the cops who were patrolling the parking lot didn't come over to us and say, hey, people, tone it down. You're being a little too loud. But finally, it got cold, and we decided. We were too cold to stand out and talk, and we parted ways. But later, I told Anne that I just can't help it. I get so excited when I talk about church, and especially Good Shepherd. But how do we build that excitement with others? How do we get them to come and see? Especially when there are so many preconceived notions out there about church. Church is boring. I don't want to be asked to do anything. I'm not good at anything. All church people are nothing but hypocrites. All those church-going Christians, ah, they're just Jesus freaks. And the list goes on and on. And frankly, we've heard most of them. Think of everything that we do here at Good Shepherd and how we follow God. Well, we worship together, of course, that's obvious. But we organize and also collect items for the concern of the month. We put up bulletin boards. We film the service. We edit the service for YouTube. We pack grocery bags for summer lunch. We carry out grocery bags for summer lunch. We organize summer lunch. We organize community events when there's not a nasty pandemic going on. We do so much here at Good Shepherd. And while it's true that it can be very time and life consuming to go all in and follow God, it can also, though, be very simple. Donating a bag of dog food for the pet pantry, giving a few extra dollars for Thanksgiving, Christmas, or Easter food baskets, or simply carrying out a bag of groceries for a summer lunch participant. It can all be really quite simple. So invite friends and acquaintances to come and see. 
And now that we go out to the entire world via YouTube, it's time we tell everyone watching to come and see. See the great things that are happening here at Good Shepherd, right here on Cleveland Avenue. All are welcome. Come and see. Amen. In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Keep yourselves in the love of God. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all our sins. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world and for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. Let us pray. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marve, marve, marvelously made, that we serve as wise stewards on earth, our home, let us pray. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of governments, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. Let us pray. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are imprisoned or homebound, especially those we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. That God console all who suffer, let us pray. For our neighborhood, for visitors joining us for the first time or returning, and for those absent from our assembly, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament, let us pray. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action, 
Let us pray. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ.